Now, most would say when you think of segregation in America, their first thought is of African Americans. As the 19th century came to an end and years of segregation began, many African Americans began to seek a future they could call their own. Through education, industrial training, and self-improvement, several decided to seek out a dignified life. During the early 1900s, educators and scientists like Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver sparked a change they wanted to see in the world by encouraging more African Americans to create a niche for themselves in the U.S. economy. Now, a black Texas minister named W.L. Dixon followed this thought and created the Dixon Colored Orphanage, the first orphanage in East Texas dedicated to only minorities. More than 120 years later, our Chloe Bradford and Alan Casper went back to the sacred land to uncover fallen stories that refused to be forgotten. I think it's a thing where too many times history is not written correctly. On a hill in a quiet and rural East Texas city, a spirited and historical story is waiting to be told. A story that began more than a century ago. Between the green shrubs and dated trees, wisdom still whispers. See something like this that needs to be done and nobody never says anything? Well, what will happen? Nothing. Since we knew about it, let's get out here and get it done. But how did we get here? In its early years, Gilmer was a suitable engine for some East Texas's economy, serving as a cotton ginning center and several sweet potato farms. While one East Texas town was booming, another Lone Star City was trembling in devastation. On September 8, 1900, the deadliest natural disaster in American history struck Galveston. Historians call it the deadliest because a Category 4 hurricane destroyed 3,600 buildings and killed 6,000 to 12,000 people. Without family members to turn to, a home to find solace or food to eat, orphan children begin their journey out of Galveston and into East Texas. That same year, as many wandered to find hope, a Dallas-based minister inspired by Booker T. Washington wanted to help. By the spring of 1900, another suitable engine began. Reverend William Lee Dixon spotted young, mother and fatherless children wandering Texas roads. He extended his hands to help those in need and provided food, shelter, clothing, and job training. Children slept in shacks and learned about farming and hard labor. During a meeting with African-American Baptist ministers, Reverend R.C. Buckner and other religious organizations decided to establish an orphanage. Upshur County residents, including Confederate officers, donated 70 acres of land. Gilmer was the chosen soil. According to the Texas State Historical Association, on the fourth day of 1901, the Dixon Colored Orphanage opened its doors. The first and only colored orphanage in East Texas. I feel and imagine what they have, what they went through by having no mother, no father. And that is very touching to me. The site went from 70 acres to 800 acres in its final days. Starting with six children, the orphanage eventually housed 200 children on record. From a shack or two, the institution grew to have at least 40 buildings, including a blacksmith, mechanical and engineering shop, laundry room, cotton shed, potato curing plant, bakery, and dining hall, eventually becoming a privately owned housing facility, farm site, and educational institution. Many of the students and residents would learn domestic work, industrial labor, and farming. Some girls were eventually placed with families as cooks. Dixon once stated his goal of raising up students was not to make them preachers or teachers, but some of the best servants to maintain the traditions of the Old South. Some were members of a co-ed choir. They would sing hymns and songs at churches around East Texas and collect monetary donations to help pay for the upkeep of the orphanage. Boys were sent into the community to pick cotton for white farmers in preparation for their adult lives. Other residents married and found their place in the world as regular citizens. So how did a reverend's vision to extend a hand for a generation in need, hope and education, turn into a forgotten past? You see where people from different countries did different things. We don't know what they did, but the, somebody here done something great. As the founder's health started to deteriorate, so did the orphanage. 
On December 15, 1922, a mysterious fire demolished the boys' dormitory. The organization needed $107,000. And about two months after the fire, in a plea for help, Dixon wrote a letter or advertisement that read, Persons from every walk of life is being asked to assist in this effort. We must have fire protection. We must have steam heating plants. We must have electrical lights. Fighting through turmoil, the orphanage survived on charitable donations. But sadly, a few years later, devastation struck again. In October 1929, the girls' dormitory burned down. With nowhere for boys and girls to lay their heads and donations running thin, Dixon had to make a decision. He decided to turn the facility over to the state. Texas representatives visited the site to survey the area. According to reports from the Senate's 41st regular session on January 8, 1929, Senator Poland sent the following resolution. The property is suitable for a state orphanage for colored children. The state of Texas desires to show its appreciation of its colored citizenship by making ample provision for the maintenance, education, and training of its indigent colored children. In exchange for debt, the deed of the orphanage would be handed over. Three months later, the state made another trip to the Dixon Orphanage before agreeing to take over the building, this time with a different outcome. According to the House of Representatives, the campus was poorly cared for, for buildings for the boys and girls were very scarce of bedding and very crowded. In one instance, 11 beds were in one room, but three to four boys shared each one. Children did not eat for days. Babies were undernourished. Students worked on the farm some days and went to school other days. A request for $250,000 was recommended for proper equipment and maintenance in order for the state to take over. A report from the House of Representatives went on to say it would be very unwise to establish a state institution. We therefore recommend that the legislature do not accept the offer. Eventually, in 1930, the Texas legislature voted to take over the orphanage, changing its name to the Gilmer State Orphanage for Negroes in hopes it would eventually be moved to Austin. As his health became worse, Reverend Dixon decided to live with his family in Hearn, which is where he died in 1933. By 1944, the state's Board of Control took over with an average enrollment of 100 children per year. Still under the state's supervision, legislators failed to fund the organization for fireproofing and reparations, ultimately deciding to transfer students to Austin's Texas Blind, Deaf, and Orphan School. 72 acres of the lost home of Hope was given to Texas A&M for a sweet potato farm. Today, you can still see a portion of the university's business. The rest of it faded away and turned into booming Gilmer. All that is left of the Dixon Orphanage is weathered headstones for Sally Dixon and J.W. Washington with dozens of other nameless individuals. To me and us, it was a historical site. Hey, look, this is in Gilmer, Texas. That, that's what we were looking at. This is Gilmer, Let, let's help make Gilmer shine. That was the bottom line. Gene Turner is used to visiting various cemeteries to spruce them up. Gene and his brothers Eddie and Wilson Turner and their friend Huey Mitchell stumbled on the once forgotten history in 2014. We started asking questions about this cemetery. I don't know. I don't know. Well, nobody knew, nobody wanted to get up and do anything. So then my brother and I committee, so we'll find it. And finally, I come out to a gentleman by the name of Ike Flewellen. He said, I know about where it's located. I'll carry you over there. So we came over here and we drove through the cemetery, not realizing it was here because it was growed up so bad. Yeah, it was a dump ground. There was automotive parts here and just overgrown brushes and bramble. It just, it, you, you couldn't tell it was here. And with the help of local churches and other family members and friends, the site was cleared away and established as a historical site by the Texas State Historical Association. So from this point on, this will always be a cemetery. And above all, we see that this people that was buried here have a found resting place that are being cared for. And that means the world and all to me. Chloe Bradford, CBS 19. Now, committee members for the Dixon Colored Orphanage Cemetery are rededicating the site on the 22nd of February. Information on the orphanage was collected from the Upshur County Museum and the Texas Historical Association. Board members for the museum are collecting donations to build a road that leads to the cemetery. If you can help, donations can be made to the Historic Museum for the Dixon Cemetery.